Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name, just thanking you, Lord, for all these opportunities to speak for you. I just pray, God, that you would cover this message and that you would help me to expound on it. And that those who are listening, Father, that they would open their eyes and really understand the seasons we are moving into. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. It's late right now and actually it's dark. And um, I don't usually make no videos at night. But I ran into something that caught my attention. Because the world is moving into a critical state right now. And anybody who's paying attention to what's going on, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that reality. The Bible is unfolding right in front of our faces. There's an increase of wars and rumors of wars and it's increasing with intensity. And we know that the Lord said that in Matthew 24. And I know I talk about this a lot sometimes, but I want to keep us aware of this. I want to keep it in the front of our minds so that we stay in the reality of what's going on and we don't get rocked to sleep like many people are right now. I believe we in a season of sleepiness where most of Christianity is falling into a dark place of lukewarmness where they getting rocked to sleep right now. And I don't want none of us to be rocked to sleep and I'm not too much on giving news but tonight, I just want to give some informative news, and I wouldn't even talk about this if it wasn't for something that stood out, that I believe it stood out for a purpose, and I believe that purpose was God, and uh, He made it stand out for a reason, so I'm just going to go ahead and just discuss this anyway and talk about it, and I just want to share two videos, two short clips right now pertaining to this issue with korea i mean we see all this what's going on the the situation with korea is intensifying and like i said i don't want to be no news reporter but i want to be a watchman i want to watch what's going on and i want to keep us informed those who look at my channel those who who listen to what i gotta say i just want to keep us informed about what's going on and kind of keep a biblical perspective a biblical pr approach because bible prophecy is manifesting right in front of our faces and not to talk about it would to be to ignore the whole book of revelations because revelations is a whole book about what's going to unfold in the later times in the last days and not only that luke 21 and we got the book of mark and we also got Matthew chapter 24, all this talks about things that are going to unfold where God gives us prophetic insight of the times that will that we will uh, move into or the, the seasons and, and the conditions of how things are going to be as we move closer and closer to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see that the conditions are beginning to get worse and worser and more intense and more intense it's increasing with intensity and like i said all you got to do is look around and you can see it i know they got a group right now that's in a collective state of denial they are in a place of denying reality and i pray in the name of jesus that they would wake up and i always pray when i'm in prayer with the lord i'm always praying that those who are asleep right now those who are in a place of deception that would wake up because we are moving into horrific times there is going to be a a great shaking that's going to that's going to begin to shake the entire system of the world this whole systems are about to get shaken and those in America that are sitting in a place of comfortability will be shaken out of their comfortability for a season and i believe we moving into some uncomfortable times right now and these things need to be talked about so that they can be in the front of our minds so that we don't fall asleep so that we don't get caught up in the cares of this life and fall into a lukewarm relationship we have to be rooted and grounded in our love for the truth because jesus says in second thessalonians chapter two he says because they do not love the truth that they would 
would be saved, he says, I am going to cause them to believe a lie. He's going to hand people over to a deception. Why? Because they do not love the truth. They are not rooted and grounded in the truth. They are not abiding in Christ. And to abide in Christ is to abide in his word. And Jesus said in John chapter 8, if you abide in my word, indeed you are my disciples. And then you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. See, the truth sets us free from the deception. It unveils the darkness that overshadows our perspective. Our perception to discern to uh, and understand what's going on in the world. That's why it's so important for us to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God because it sanctifies our heart. It brings us into the realm of discernment so we can discern good from evil, right from wrong. We can discern what's going on, prophetic seasons. We can see them begin to unfold. Like it says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, it says, The wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. Who are the wise? It is God's children. His sons and daughters, the ones that are rooted and grounded in their love for the truth, the ones that are being uh, sober and vigilant and being watchful in their prayers. Like the scripture says in Luke chapter 21, verse 36, watch and pray, watch and pray. This is a command. God's people should not be in darkness. We should not be ignorant and simple minded people. God's people are not simple minded people. We are people of preparation. Like the scripture says in chapter 11 about Noah, it says no. Noah being being uh warned, divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear to prepare an ark for him and his family. He was listening to God. He was in tune to God. He had an ear for God. He was watching and he was listening and God spoke to that man and he understood what was happening and he, he moved with godly fear to prepare an ark for him and his family so that him and his family would be saved. And I truly believe the only reason that Noah heard God speak is because Noah's attention was solely attentive to God. He was focused on God. He was rooted and grounded in his love for God. The Bible says that he was a, a, a man uh, perfect in his generations. And I know they got a lot to that scripture, but I believe he was perfect in being focused on God, rooted and grounded in his love for the truth. And the Bible says that he was a preacher of righteousness. And when God spoke, he heard God's voice. And the Bible says in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, that Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen moved with godly fear to prepare an ark for him and his family. So he was in tune to God. He was listening to God. He was paying attention to his, to his lifestyle, his walk. He was rooted and grounded. And this is why it is so important right now because we are moving into a season where the demonic is beginning to increase right now. And they are trying to get all of to, to fall shipwreck in our faith, to drift, cause us to drift away from the word, drift away from prayer, drift away from worship. Why? So that we can get weakened out in our walk. We get dulled out in our walk. We fall in a place of lukewarm. We lose our fire. We lose our passion. And guess what the scripture says in Revelations chapter three? God says, I want you hot nor cold, but because you are neither but lukewarm, he says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So God is not pleased with lukewarm Christians. This is why it's so important for us to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Remember, he says it's going to be just like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, nobody listened. Judgment was on the horizon and God uh, called on Noah and Noah was a preacher of righteousness and Noah warned of the judgment. God, God moved on Noah's heart and Noah was warning of the judgment, but nobody listened. They all kept doing what they was doing. They was eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah went into the ark. Then the flood came 
and took them all away. They wasn't ready. They wasn't prepared. And God says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. And this is where we at right now. We got a group that's preparing, a group that's stoking their fire, and we got a group that's not preparing. We got a group that's not stoking their fire. They simple-minded. They not prudent Christians. They not they not walking in wisdom. They not they not fl- um, rooted in in the Word of God. They not growing in the Spirit of God. They not humbling themselves into a place of submission to God. The Bible says God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. What is proud? Proud is arrogancy. Proud is rebellion. Proud is saying I I, I don't have time to get into the Word. Proud is saying I don't have time to get into prayer. Proud is saying I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go fellowship. That's what pride is. And you start to rebel. You start to resist God. So guess what happens? God begins to resist you. And what happens is he pulls back his grace from you. But God says he resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. What is humility? Humility is submission and surrender. I'm submitting and surrendering to the word of God. I'm getting rooted in it. I got a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. I want more and more and more. I want to know about the God that created me. I want to feel his anointing. I want to seek his presence. I want to be in alignment and agreement. I want holiness. The Bible says pursue peace and holiness with all people for without which no one will see the Lord. That's a serious scripture that a lot of people don't talk about. Holiness. The Bible says, pursue peace and holiness without which no one, no one, neither you, neither me will see the Lord. And this is a very serious scripture that a lot of people don't talk about. Be ye holy for which I am holy, says the Lord. We need to be seeking holiness in the fear of of the Lord, that knowing that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God, the Bible says that only few find the road to life. So we want to make sure that we are on fire for God. We want to make sure we rooted and grounded in the word of truth. Eternity in with God is just as certain as eternity in hell if we're not paying attention to our walk. And I always like to talk about this because there is a spirit of distraction that's trying to get us distracted from the word, get us distracted from prayer. And we got to discipline ourselves. We got to discipline ourselves like we got to discipline ourselves to go to work. You know, like you got to get up and know you got to go to work. Well, get up and know you got to go talk to God. If you don't feel like talking to God, like if there's a spirit of lethargy trying to attack you and try to push you back, you press against it. Like Paul says, he says, I don't consider myself as apprehended it, but one thing I do is I forget about them things that are behind me and I press on into the higher calling that I got in Christ Jesus. Paul understood the spiritual opposition that was coming against them and it also was manifesting in the physical. There's a spiritual opposition that is coming against the born again Christian and born again Christians are not called to go with the flow of this sinful society. We are called to press against it and sometimes we're going to have to press into the word. Sometimes we're going to have to press in the prayer. Sometimes we're going to have to press in the worship. Sometimes we're going to have to take a stand on the promises of God. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. There's a violent opposition to the advancement of the kingdom of heaven and we got to take it by force. We got to press into the word of God. There is an opposing force that is trying to slide us into a ditch and this is something that I feel like right now that the Lord always has me talking about because there is an opposition in the spirit trying to steal the fire of God out of our hearts the Bible says in Matthew 24 it says in the last days because lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold and that word love in Matthew chapter 24 in its Greek original Greek uh, context it means agape it's the love of God so that scripture is talking about born again Christians the love of God in their hearts are going to grow cold because of lawlessness because of sin because of lethargy because 
because of lukewarmness. They're not going to be abiding in Christ. They're not going to be abiding in prayer. They're going to fall into a place of laziness and they're going to fall into a place of sleepiness. And this is what God's showing us that as we get closer and closer to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that things are going to increase with intensity. So we want to keep the love of God uh, aflamed in our heart. We want to keep that passion that we have for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ alive and burning strong. We need to feed that fire though. We got to stoke it just like you got to stoke a, 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 a fire with wood. You got to keep stoking that fire to keep that fire burning. It's just like that in your spiritual life. If you don't stoke your spiritual life, that fire in, uh, of desire for God is going to begin to go out. The Bible says man can't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out the mouth of God, just like you got a physical life, you got a spiritual life. And just like you got to feed your spiritual life to live, you got to feed your spiritual life to live. And just like if you don't feed your physical life, your physical life begins to die It's the same thing in your spiritual life. You don't feed your spiritual life. Your spiritual life is going to wither away. If you don't stay rooted and grounded and abiding in Christ, you are going to wither away and you are going to get burned up. So that's why I'm always talking about this. And kind of like sometimes I can sound a little extreme, but it's a very serious thing because God says in the last days, there is going to be an assault against the love of God in our heart. And that love is the fire. That love is that passion that inflames our soul. That's that anointing that gives us just a a fire to preach, a fire to witness, a, a hunger and a thirst for the word of God where we want more and more and more and more. And the only way that we can gain a desire in a hunger in a thirst for God is if if we begin to feed our lives if we don't have that hunger yet feed feed on the word of God eat the word of God read the word of God meditate on the word of God get in the prayer push yourself in the prayer and you keep praying and you get in the worship you get your mind stayed on God and soon that desire is going to begin to develop there is going to be a hunger where you're going to start to desire God. I'm a desire to get in the word of God. And this is where we begin to grow. This is where that fire begins to inflame our hearts. Because the Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be feel. We must hunger and thirst for God's righteousness. And this is what the enemy's after right now. He's after the hunger of God in our hearts. He's after the thirst that we have for the word of God. He's after the thirst that we have for the presence of God. And he's attacking it. He's using the system of this world. He's using TV. He's using music. He's using uh, unbelieving people to bring them into your life. He's trying to wound your heart. He's trying to hurt you. He's trying to, the devil's trying to raise up people right now to speak word curses against you, to speak words of discouragement, words that can wound your heart because he's after the hunger of God. He's after that thirst for the word of God because he knows once you hunger and once you begin to thirst after righteousness, the Bible says you shall be Field. And this is God's word and God's word does not return void. It will accomplish what it set out to accomplish. It always does. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Stoke your fires right now in this season right now. We are moving into some serious, serious times. So now I'm going to move on to my um, news clip about what's going on with North Korea. And I want to kind of read a scripture right now. And this is not just dealing with North Korea, but it's all kind of other nations that's gearing up. China, Russia, I mean, there's wars all over. And people might say, oh, that's always been like that. Yes, it always been wars, but you never seen an increase with intensity like it is right now. And all there is in the headlines is the word nuclear, 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 nuclear war. You never seen nuclear war in the headlines like this ever. I'm talking about it's all the time, daily, daily. All you hear is nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. And this is where we moving into. We moving into a, a, a season 
uh, of nuclear warfare where I believe that a lot of people are going to die in these wars that's going to come to the world. There's going to be a lot of wars that's going to increase. And God says like this. He says this in Matthew 24, verse 7. He says, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginning of the sorrows. So this is the beginning of the labor pains. And he's talking about spiritual deception and he's talking about wars nations rising against nations he says when you start to see these things happening these are the beginning of the sorrows these are the beginning of the labor pains and we can't lose sight of this we have to have discernment of the times we have to be like uh like the um have an ashitar anointing of uh, the tribe of ashitar they knew the time the sign uh, the seasons of their times and they was able to instruct David. So we need to have a discernment in this time. And so we're not in blindness to what's happening right now. I mean, Bible prophecy is manifesting at an accelerating pace. And I know I keep talking right now, but I just kept rolling with the flow. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to play these two clips. Now, the reason why I want to play this is because... I see God speaking in it. God had got my attention. It's this lady named Sister Barbara. I listen to her uh, 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 sometimes. And I just happened to listen to her prophecy that she caught yesterday. And she released it today. And she labeled the prophecy, the clock has stopped. Okay. Now, I want to play this prophecy for us. And, um... After I play the prophecy, I want to show you uh, how we see a clear connection to the prophecy that she received from God and the headlines in the newspaper today. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to play her prophecy for us. And uh, I want y'all to listen. And um, it's called The Clock Has Stopped. So she heard in the spirit. Yesterday, the Lord was speaking to her, and he said, the clock has stopped. And uh, evidently, he downloaded um, a word of knowledge to her, or a uh, prophecy. And it's not long, it's 2 minutes and 48 seconds. But I want to play this for us, because she posted this today. Now, let me keep in mind, I, I listen to this lady uh, sometimes, and I know a little something about her just by listening to her. She doesn't watch TV. She doesn't watch TV, and I know that she's a woman uh, of God that fasts. She's a faster. So, um, and, um, so I know she doesn't watch TV. So, and her prophecy is labeled, the clock has stopped. I want us to just, I want us to listen to this prophecy. I'm going to go ahead and press play right now. So, y'all be patient and just listen to it. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the God's Lord 7 End Time Prophecy Channel. Sister Barbara, Brother Dan here uh, today. And yes, I have a prophecy. I got it first thing this morning. I was hearing it yesterday. So this is, this is um, what, what, what would you call it, Brother Dan? Um, I usually say prophecy. It, it's not just rough. It made me speechless. Okay, it's speechless. And I have very hard, very, not very much speech, speech, speechless. speechless. <laughs> okay. I usually have another word besides speechless. Yes, okay. Okay, so we're going to be in the book of Joel. Um, we're going to be chapter 2, verse 28, King James Bible. And by the way, today is Tuesday, April 4th, 2017. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Whoa, You're up. I got the, the Holy Spirit on me. Okay, get ready. This is definitely a humdinger. The clock has stopped. I have poured out my spirit on your young men, old men, sons, and daughters. Dreams, visions, prophecy. I have sent you my messengers and prophets. Many great civilizations have followed the same path of desolation and utter destruction. Now they remain buried under the seas and waters 
in the mountains and under the sand, hidden from all. In an instant, all things will pass away from a melting fire and heat. A new beginning awaits those having the spirit of the living God dwelling within. The clock has stopped. Time comes to its end. Wow. Wow. That's speechless. Yes. I, I, I heard last night, it was in the evening, I heard the clock has stopped, and I knew we were in trouble when I heard that. I knew what I was going to get. Yes. So again, we know we're in the latter days. This is a confirmation evidence. Other people have sent me already messages when they saw it posted up on Gosselers on Facebook. Um, so we're in the latter days. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I'm announcing the coming of the glorious kingdom and his majesty. I started that September 24th, 2015. I continue on until April 6th, 2019. So, um, once again, I'd like us on Godzilla 7 Facebook, and I want to say a, a special thank you to my friends out there at the, the Grace Hope Church, Church. So, I want to say that on the, the video, because Brother Dan, we never know what goes on in that, that email thanking people that right. help us. So, God bless you. Yes. Shalom. Okay. So, she got this prophecy. She uh, received it yesterday, and she released it this morning. And, um... The Lord told her the clock has stopped. Okay, she received that in the spirit. And her prophecy actually was biblical prophecy. Actually, uh, the what she was speaking that the Lord gave her was out of Second Peter. And, um, you know, we can even go there right now and, and look at that scripture. Bear with me. I know this is kind of long, but it says right here, it says, um, For... This they willingly forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that then perished being flooded with water. And here's the part that, um, um, well, let me jump down to verse 10. This is what I heard in her prophecy. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away and a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. And both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So that's the scripture that I heard coming out of her prophecy as she said, spoke it and said she received it from the Lord. So her prophecy was actually biblical. And God doesn't speak a prophecy contrary to his word. It's always in agreement with his word. But the heading of the prophecy that God gave her is called the clock has stopped. Okay. That's what I want to pay attention to. Because after I watched her video this morning, it was kind of sticking with me for some reason. And you know when God wants to get your attention on something... He makes it stick with you. It just keeps sticking with you for some reason. And uh, I didn't understand why it was sticking with me until a while ago. I was just skimming through my news feed. And I ran into this article. Now check this out. I'm going to turn the phone. It says, North Korea fires missile as U.S. official says clock has now ran out. On Pinong Gwen. See that? Clock has now ran out. And her prophecy that she received from the Lord, she received it yesterday, is the Lord told her the clock has stopped. And this article about Korea, North Korea, that I just read to you, it came out today, not yesterday. It came out today. So I seen the prophetic connection of her prophecy that she received from God and the news feed that I ran into. And um, just God was just, it just it, I felt the nagging in, in my heart to talk about this because I see the connection. And what's going on in this article, I don't want to even go ahead and play the video, uh, but basically what happens is uh, America and Japan and all of them, they're doing uh, drills. In the sea right there, because um, North Korea shot some missiles, and it moved them to take some action. Well, they started doing their drills, 
North Korea just shot more missiles. So basically, what's going on now, to make a long story short rather than playing this video, is that Trump's going to try to get China to put pressure on North Korea, but if China doesn't do it, he said he's going to do it by himself. He don't need, he, he, he's going to go without anybody, and he's going to uh, attack North Korea. So this is what we got going on right now. And um, I just seen the confirmation from her prophecy uh, that she received from the Lord yesterday. And the uh, news uh, that is um, in the headlines today. And like I said, her prophecy re she received was the clock has stopped. And in the news feed right here, the U.S. official says the clock has now ran out. So, you know, we see the similarities right now, and basically they both meaning the same thing. You know, the clock has stopped. The clock has ran out. So, you know, God always confirms his word. And I truly believe that lady is uh, hearing from the Lord. I, I truly believe that her prophecies that she hears and she gives out is uh, legit. And um, so I wanted to just share this with us because this stuff is happening and um, things are going to escalate as we get closer and closer to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that this is the end of the world, but what I'm saying is prepare. This stuff is happening. We are in the end times. All the prophetic prophecies are unfolding. Biblical realities is unfolding right in front of our faces. And we need to be rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. We need to be prepared so that if anything does happen, that we die in Christ. Because our lives are just a mist. The Bible says that in the book of James. One day you hear and the next day you go. gone. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen the next week. We don't know what's going to happen next month. And we want to make sure that we are in alignment and walking with God. That what we got, got with God is authentic. That we got a real relationship and relationships are built on time. So get into the word of God. Call out on the name of the Lord. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, call out on the name of the Lord. Get into the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want to be born again? You got to believe. And the Holy Spirit will manifest himself upon you and up in you. And he will come into your heart and God will become your father. And he will lead you and guide you in all things. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I just wanted to get this out. It was just on my heart. I know the video is kind of long and I don't make a lot of videos. So y'all just be blessed and y'all have an awesome and amazing night tonight.